Let's bow our heads now for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee tonight for this another opportunity to come to worship You. We are thankful to be alive and to have this great revelation of eternal life dwelling within us. And we've come tonight, Father, to study Thy Word together. These great hidden mysteries that's been hid since the foundation of the world. And the Lamb is the only one that can reveal it to us. I pray that He will come among us tonight and will take of His Word and reveal it to us that we might know how to be better servants to Him in this in time. Oh God, as we see that we are now in the end time, help us to know our place, Lord, and our frail being, and the certainty of the coming of the Lord soon. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe it was David said, I was happy when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. It's always a great privilege to come and in the studying of the Word together gives us this great hope. Now there's many standing and I'm just going to hurry as quick as possible. But I trust that you have enjoyed uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit like I have in these last couple of times. Amen. And today... I had something to happen that I haven't had for a long time. I was studying on this on this revelation here on the opening of the seal. Years ago I run through it here about some twenty years ago, I guess, or something like that. But somehow or another I never was just exactly satisfied. It seemed like there was some things, especially in these seals, because those seals are the entire book. Amen. It's the book. The whole book is one book sealed. It starts, for instance, if I had something here, I'd show you what I mean. Here is one seal. That's one, and you roll it up like this the way it was rolled. And you roll it up in this manner. And at the end, there's a little piece sticking out like that. That's the first seal. All right. Then that's the first part of the book. Then the next seal is rolled in this manner, right to the side of it. And it's rolled up in this matter like here. And then at the end, right here, there's another sticking out means two seals. And that's the way the whole Bible was wrote and scrolled. And so, to break these seals, it opens the mysteries of the book. Did you get the study in Jeremiah how he wrote that? Many of you taken it down last night. How them seals were wrote and placed away for keeping. Uh, until uh, he returned after 70 years <clears throat> of the captivity. He was returned back and claimed his possession. And I certainly like the study. You can't, there's no way to express it all because it's an eternal word. It's an eternal book. Therefore, we just have to kind of hit the high places. And today in studying, I have written down many scriptures so you can study it and also, in the tape, so reveal much of it as you study. And uh, there's so many things. If I could just stand here at the platform and reveal it to you the way it's revealed to me in the room, my, it would be marvelous. But when you get here, you're pressed, and you just kind of jump over the things and try to just get the main part to the people that they might see it. I certainly appreciate that song Brother Unrin just sang. Down from His glory. If He hadn't come from His glory, where would we all be tonight? Amen. So we're thankful that He come down to help us. Now with many standing, we'll just hurry right through in your, uh, the best we can. I don't say we're going to hurry right through, but I mean we're going to get started as quick as possible. And now, let us turn now after... The, we've had the first chapter, second, third, and fourth, and 
fifth last night, and tonight we're starting on the sixth chapter of Revelation. Now, as we study uh, this chapter, we're referring different places, even to Old and New Testament alike, because the entire book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's altogether the revelation of, of the Lord Jesus. The revelation of Jesus Christ. It's God revealing Himself in the book. Revealing Himself through Christ in the book. And Christ is the revelation of God. Amen. He come to reveal God because He and God were the same. Amen. God was in Christ reconciling the world to Himself. In other words, you never know just what God was until He revealed Himself through Christ. And you can see, I used to think years ago that maybe God was angry with me, but Christ loved me. Come to find out, it's the same person, see? Yeah. And uh, uh, Christ is the very heart of God. And now, as we study this, you're comparing it now. The first uh, three books of the Bible, of Revelations, which we have pretty thoroughly combed that, is the church ages, the the seven church ages. Now these seven church ages, seven seals, uh, seven trumpets and vials and, and unclean spirits like frogs and all this goes together. My high, I'd like to have a, a great big map and draw it all across the way I sit, you know, just how they, each one takes its place. I've drawn it out on a little sheet of paper, but I, you know, and everything so far is just exactly right. And with the time and the ages, as they have come and gone, and everything has blended in just perfectly right. So it may not altogether be right, but it's the best that I know about it anyhow. And uh, I know if, if I do my best, and I make a mistake in trying to do my best, and the best that I know of, God surely will forgive me for doing, uh, for the error if I have done wrong. But now those first three books is the first seven church ages. And then we find out in the fourth chapter of Revelation, John is caught up. See? We see the churches. There's not too much said about the church ages. That's where I think that people are going to be so surprised. They're, they're, they're applying uh, the church way over into the tribulation to those things that have happened. And as I said Sunday, yesterday, the first thing you know, those tribulations will break in and you'll wonder, why was not the, the first coming was a rapture? And it'll be as it has been, it's past, and you didn't know it. And now there's not too much promise to that church, that Gentile church, the bride. Now, I want you to bear in mind, there is a church and a bride. See? You always have to make it run in threes. Fours is wrong. Threes. Threes, sevens, tens, twelves, twenty-fours, and forties, fifties. And those unbroken numbers, the Bible is, and God runs His messages in, in num, the num, numerals of the Bible in those numbers. And you get something that flies off of one of those numbers, you better watch. It won't come out right on the next thing. You've got to bring it back here to where you start from. Brother Vail, uh, Brother Lee Vail, he, he, I think he's here. We were talking the other day about uh, people who are getting off a track. It's just like shooting a target. If that gun is perfectly balanced, perfectly trained and sighted, it's got to hit the target unless that barrel moves or twists or vibration throws it off. And wherever our wind puffs, Wherever it starts off at, there's only one way to do is come back to where it left the track and start again. If it's going to hit the target, if it doesn't, why? It just doesn't hit the target. And that's the way in studying Scripture, I believe, if we find out we start something here and it doesn't come out right, you see it isn't, well, we've made a mistake somewhere and you've got to come back. You'll never figure it with your mind. It just isn't. We just found out by the Scriptures that there's no man in heaven or in earth or beneath the earth or ever was or ever will be that can do it. The Lamb alone can do it. So seminary exclamation, 
whatever it might be, is just nothing. See? It takes the Lamb to reveal it. That's all. So we trust that He will help us. John caught up in the fourth chapter to see things which was, which is, and which is to come. But the church finishes at the fourth chapter and Christ takes up the church caught up in the air to meet him and does not appear again until the 19th chapter when he comes back uh, with uh, as King of King and Lord of Lords with the church. And now, oh, I hope someday that we can get through it all, maybe before he comes. If we don't, we'll see it anyhow, so Amen. it doesn't matter. Now, in this fifth chapter, the breaking of these seals. And now, the seven seal book. First, we want to read the first seal. Last evening, the background, just a little more, we find out that when John looked and seen that book still in the hands of the original owner, God, you remember how it was lost? By Adam. He forfeited the book of life for the knowledge of Satan and lost his inheritance. Lost everything. And no way for redemption. Then God made in the likeness of man came down and become a redeemer to us. To redeem us. And now we find out that in days past by, these things which was mysterious is to be opened up to us in the last days. Now, we find out also in this that uh, as soon as John heard this announcement for the, the kinsman redeemer to come forth and to make his claims, there was no man that could do it. No man in heaven, no man in earth, no man beneath the earth. No one was worthy even to look at the book. Just think of that. No person at all worthy even look at it. And John just started weeping. He knew that all there was no chance for redemption then. Everything was failing. Quickly we find his weeping stopping. Quickly because it was announced by one of the four beasts, or the elders rather, one of the, the elders said, Don't weep, John, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. In other words, overcome and is conquered. John turning, he saw a lamb coming out. It must have been bloody and cut and wounded. It had been slain. The, said, it, a lamb that had been slain. And, of course, it was still bloody. If you'd have cut the lamb and killed it, it the way that lamb was, anyhow, it was hacked to pieces on a cross. Spears in the side and nails in the hands and feet and thorns over the brow. He was in an awful condition. And this lamb come forth and went over to him that sat up on the throne that helped the complete title deed of redemption and the lamb goes and takes the book out of the hand of him that sat up on the throne and was stuck and opened the seals and opened the book and then when that happened we found out there must have been a, a great something took place in heaven for the elders and the four and twenty elders and the beast and and everything in heaven began to cry out worthy. And here come the angels and poured out the vows of the prayers of the saints. The saints under the altar screamed out, Worthy art, art thou, Lamb, for you have redeemed us. Amen. And Amen. now you have made us kings and priests, and we shall rule on the earth. Amen. Oh, my. Amen. And that soul, when he opened that book, you see the book actually was planned and written before the foundation of the world. Amen. This book, the Bible, was really written before the foundation of the world. And Christ being the Lamb was slain 
before the foundation of the world. And the, the members of his bride, their names were put in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world, but it's been sealed up. And uh, now it's being revealed Amen. whose names were in there. All about it. What a great thing. And John, when he saw it, he, he said everything in heaven, everything underneath the earth, everything heard him saying amen, blessings and honor. And he just really is having a great time. And for the Lamb was worthy. And now, the Lamb is standing now tonight as we enter into this sixth chapter. He's got the book in his hand and starting to reveal it. And oh, I would have absolutely today, and I hope that people are spiritual, I would have had a horrible mistake on that if it hadn't been about 12 o'clock the day when the Holy Spirit came in the room and corrected me on something that I was writing down to say. I was taking it from an old context. I had nothing on it. I don't know what the second seal is. No more than nothing. But I'd got some old context of something I spoke on several years ago and wrote it down. And I had gathered this context context. Dr. Smith, many great outstanding teachers that I, I gathered in, and all of them believe that. So I wrote it down, and I was fixed to say, well, now I'll study it from that standpoint. And there, about 12 o'clock in the day, the Holy Spirit just swept right down into the room, and the whole thing is opened up to me. There. So, of this, of this first seal being opened. I'm as positive as I'm standing here tonight that this is the gospel truth that I want to say. I, I just know it. Because if a revelation is contrary to the word, then it isn't revelation. And you know, there's some of the stuff can look so absolutely true and yet isn't true. It looks like it is, but it isn't. Now, we find the Lamb with the book now. And now in the... Uh, Sixth chapter we read, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of a thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now that's the first seal. The one we're going to try, by the grace of God, to explain it tonight. By the very best, and I realize that a man trying to explain that is walking on dangerous grounds if you don't know what you're doing. Amen. So, if it comes to me by revelation, I'll tell you so. If I just have to take it to my own mind, I'll tell you that before I talk about it. But I'm just as positive as I'm standing here tonight that come afresh to me today from the Almighty. And I'm not prone to uh, uh, just saying things like that when it comes to this part of the Scripture. Uh, uh, I'm sh I hope you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, you can't say things if something's supposed to be laying over here uh, before it happens. You, you can't say it if something lays it over there. See? But are you reading? Are you listening to something? Now, the seven seal roll book is now being released by the Lamb. We approach that place tonight. God help us. As the seals are broken and released, the mysteries of the book are revealed. Now, you see, this is a sealed book. Now, we believe that, do we not? Amen. We believe it, it is a sealed book. Now, we never know this before. But it is. It's sealed with seven seals. That is, on the back of the book, the book is sealed with seven seals. If we talk about this kind of book, it would be like 
putting a strap across it. Seven straps. But it isn't this kind of a book. It's a scroll. And then when the scroll is unwound, that's one, that laying right in the scroll is number two, and right here says what it is, but it's a mystery. But yet, we have probed in it, but remember, the book is sealed, and the book is the book of mystery, of revelation. It is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. See? A book of revelation. And right, now you know down through the age man has probed and tried to get into that. We all have. And yet, one time I remember if, if Mr. Bohannon had to be present or, or some of his people, I, I don't mean it by any insult. Mr. Bohannon is a bosom friend and is a superintendent of public service and I was working there and I first got saved. I was telling him about reading on the book of Revelation. He said, I tried to read that thing. He said, and Mr. Bohannon was a fine man, and he, uh, he was a member of the church, and, and uh, I don't know what all he belonged to, but he said, I think that John must have had a red pepper s supper that night and went to bed on a full stomach. And I said to him, although it could have cost my job, I said, aren't you ashamed to say that? And I was just a boy, but I said, Aren't you ashamed to say that about the Word of God? See? Yet, as just a kid, no more than early, maybe 21, 22 years old, and work scarce, and the depression on, but yet there was a fear in there when I slanted, didn't hear any slant towards God's Word. It's truth. Amen. All truth. Amen. So, it was not even a dream or a nightmare. It wasn't John Eat. He was on the Isle of Patmos because he tried to put the Word of God into a book form and was exiled there by the Roman government and was on the island on the day of the Lord and he heard behind him a voice of many waters and turned to look and he saw seven golden candlesticks. And there stood the Son of God in between them. Now, and then the book is a revelation. So a revelation is something that's made known of something. Something that's been revealed. And now, notice, so you won't forget it, it is closed up until the latter time. Okay? The whole mystery of it is closed up until the latter times. We find that in the Scripture here. Now, the mystery of the book are revealed when the seals are broken. And when the seals completely are broken, the time of redemption is over because the Lamb left the intercession boat to walk out to take His claim. He was a mediator between that. But when the real revelation happens on the seals, as they begin to break, the Lamb is coming forth from the sanctuary. According to the word, we read it last night. He come from the out of the midst and tucked the book. So he's no more a mediator because even they call him a lion. And that's the, that's the king. And he's not a mediator then. Although the actors of these seals begin at the first church age. Now remember. So you you would Get the background of it thoroughly, if we can, or as thoroughly as possible. The actors, I'll place it like that because uh, um, an actor is a man who changes mass. See? Uh, in this act tonight, we're going to see that it's Satan changing his mass. And all actors, Christ acting the part that he did when he become from a spirit to man, he only put on an actor's garment, human flesh, and came down in the form of a man in order to be a kinsman redeemer. Now, I see, it's only an actor's form. That's the reason they are all in parables and, and the way they are here, like beasts and animals, so forth. It's in an act. And these actors begin in the first church age because it was Christ 
revealing himself to the seven church ages. Are you understand it? All right, see, Christ revealing himself to the seven church ages. Then, through these church ages, there's a great mess up comes along. Then, at the end of the church age, the seventh angel's message is to pick up these lost mysteries and to give it to the church. Amen. Amen. Now, we'll notice that. But uh, not then revealed in their true state. Now, in the Bible times, the mysteries were there, and they seen these things happen the way John saw it here. Now, he said there is a white horse rider. But what the mystery of it is, there's a mystery that goes with that rider. Now, what it was, they didn't know. But it's to be revealed. But it is to be revealed after the Lamb leaves the Father's throne of His intercessory as kinsman redeemer. I'm going to drop a little something in here. Now, if anybody gets these tapes, uh, any man can speak whatever he wants to. He has a right to, to anything of his conviction. But if you know, if a minister doesn't want this amongst his people, then tell him not to take it. But I, I, this is amongst the people that I have been sent to speak to. Therefore, I must reveal what is truth. See? Now, the Lamb in the time of intercessory back here, He knew that there were names in there that was put in there from the foundation of the world. And as long as them names had never been manifested on earth as yet, he had to stay there as intercessor. Amen. You get it? Amen. Perfectly. Oh. Predestination. See? Amen. All right. He had to stay there because he came to die for those that God had ordained to eternal life. Amen. Amen. See? By his foreknowledge, he saw that not by his own will. His will was that none should perish. But by his foreknowledge, he knew who would and who would not. Amen. Therefore, as long as there was one name that had never yet been declared, declared in earth, Christ had to stay there as an intercessor to take care of that name. But as soon as that final name had been splashed in that Clorox or bleach, then his intercessory days was over. Let him that's filthy be filthy still. Let him that's holy, he's holy still. See? And he leaves the sanctuary and then it becomes a judgment seat. Woe unto those outside of Christ then. Now, notice, but it's to be revealed when the Lamb leaves his intercessory place from the Father. Now, that's Revelation 5. Now, he takes the book of seals, the book of seals, or a book sealed with seals, breaks them and shows them, look, at the end of the age, now, at the end of century is over, the church ages is done, finished up, you come into the first age, the Ephesian age, reveal, sent the messenger, notice what happens as we go along. Here's the plan of it. The first thing happens there is a, uh, an announcement in the heavens first. What happens? A seal is opened. What is that? A mystery is unfolded. See? And when a mystery unfolds, then a trumpet sounds. It declares a war. A plague falls. And a church age opens. See? What is the war part? The angel of the church catches the mystery of God, not fully yet revealed, but when he does, he catches this mystery of God, and then he goes forth to the people, as the mystery's been given to him, goes forth to the people. What does he do out there? He begins to proclaim that message, and what does it start? A war. A spiritual war. And then God takes his messenger with the elect of that age and lays them away asleep and then he drops a plague upon them who rejected it. A temporary judgment. 
And then, after that is over, then it goes on and they denominate and bring in denominations and start off that man's work like a, of Wesley and uh, all the rest of them. And then it gets all in the scrapple again and then another mystery comes forth. Then what happened? Another messenger arrives on earth for a church age. See? Then when he arrives, he the, the trumpet sounds. He declares war. See? And then what happens? Finally, then he's caught away. And then when he's laid away, then plague falls, destroys them, spiritual death hits the church and she's gone. That group, then it goes on to another one. Oh, it's a great plan until it comes to that last angel. Now he has no certain mystery. But he gathers up all that's been lost in them other ages. All the truths that wasn't truly revealed yet. See, as the revelation comes. Then he reveals those things in his day. If you want to read it, there it is. Uh, Revelations 10, 1 to 1 to about 4. You'll get it. All right. See? Takes the book and of seals and breaks them and shows the seventh angel for this alone the mysteries of God is the ministry of the seventh angel. Amen. Now we just come through the church ages with even history and prove that. It is the, the angel's message of the seventh church. All right. Reveals all the mysteries that's been in the past. All the things in the past. Revelations 10, 1 to 7. That's the be. I remember, in the days of the seventh angel, it's sounding forth, blasting forth the gospel trumpet. He is to finish all the mysteries of God. Just like here come forth in the early church ages, we'll get it after a while, a doctrine then it become a saying first, and then a doctrine, and then become a statute, and then become a church. And through the dark ages and out of the dark ages come the first reformation, Luther, and he brought with him all kinds of mysterious things that happened during that church age, all back in there. Then, but he never finished it up. Then along come Wesley with sanctification, got some more of it, still never finished it, left loose ends everywhere such as Franklin instead of baptism and Luther took Father, Son, Holy Ghost instead of the Lord Jesus Christ, all these different things. Then along come the Pentecostal age with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they cabbage down on that. Now there cannot be no more ages. That's all of it. That's the Philadelphia, uh, the, not, uh, the Lady of Steel age. But then the, we found in the studying of the Scripture that the messenger to the age come right at the end of the age every time. Paul come at the end of the age. We find out that Irenaeus comes the end of the age. Martin, the end of the age. Luther, the end of the Catholic age. And what Wesley at the end of the Lutheran age. And Pentecost at the end of the age of sanctification to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And at the end of the Pentecostal age, we are supposed to receive According to the word, as God helped me tonight to show you through here, that we are to see, receive a messenger that will take all those loose ends out there and reveal the whole secret of God for the rapturing of the church. And then there's coming forth seven mysterious thunders. It's not even written at all. That's right. And I believe that through those seven thunders, will be revealed in the last days in order to get the bride together for rapture and faith because what we've got right now we, we wouldn't be able to do it. There's something we've got to step farther. We we can't have enough faith for divine healing hardly. We've got to have enough faith to be changed in a moment and be swept up out of this earth. And we'll find that after a while the Lord willing finds where it's written. Then all the judgments of these evil doers, I see down through the ages that these seals has been breaking until now the last seal is broken. And now, as they uh, as they have been watching in on these seals and just pursue pursuing what they were doing, now at the end of the ages of the church ages, all these evil doers 
uh, uh, take place and head up in the tribulation. All of these evil doers of the seven seals that's been working mysterious in the church, and we'll find out in a minute, it even worked in the name of a church. They call themselves the church. You just see if that isn't right. No wonder I've been so against the nomination, not knowing why. They end up, now it starts back here in a mile form, it keeps getting worse and worse, on down until uh, people go right into it, saying, oh yes, this is just fine. But in the last days, these things are made known. And they finally go so bad until they go plumb into the tribulation period. And how can a man say that the bride of Christ goes into the tribulation? I can't understand it. Amen. She's stuck away from the tribulation. If, if the church has been judged and they have judged themselves and have accepted the blood, how can God judge a man that's perfectly totally sinless. You say there's no such a person. Every born-again believer, true believer, is perfectly, absolutely sinless before God. He's not trusting in His Word. And the blood of Jesus that His confession is dropped into. The Bible says so. See? He that that is born of God does not commit sin or he cannot sin. How can you make a man a sinner when the bleach of the blood of Jesus Christ is between him and God that would scatter sin to there be nothing left of it? How can that pure blood of Christ ever let a sin pass there? He cannot. Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And how could we even start the thought of being perfect? But Jesus required it. And if Jesus required it, He's got to make a way for it. And He has His own blood. Now, uh, reveals all the mysteries that's gone on in the past. Now the thought is, here at the end time, that the mysteries that begin way back long ago, it's come down through the church ages, is to be revealed here at the breaking of the seal, church the last days, after the time of intercession, just about finished at that time. Then the judgments wait for those who are in the back. They go on out into that. That is, after the bride has been taken from the scene, Oh, let's just read a scripture. You all like to put on some of the scriptures? Amen. Let's take Second Thessalonians just a moment. And, and look here just a minute. It's such a beautiful picture here. I like it. And um, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, yes, yeah, Second Thessalonians. And I want the second chapter of Second Thessalonians and uh, the seventh verse. Let's see. Second Thessalonians 2 and 7. I think that's right. Now, I was writing this down, quivering and shaking. The mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Who? He that letteth. See? See, a mystery, the mystery of iniquity. Way back in that very first church age here. Here's Paul writing saying that the mystery of iniquity what is iniquity? Iniquity is something that you know you ought not to do and you do it anyhow. And Paul said there's such in the earth today, workers of iniquity. Oh, if you, we're going to get to the, let's just read that piece. Let's start up a little farther. The third verse. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that M-A-N, man of sin, be revealed the son of perdition. <laughs> right. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God, or that is worshipped, 
so that he, as God, set us in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, remitting sin. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I've told you these things. I'd like to sit under some of these teachings. Wouldn't you? And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. Not then. See? Not then, but in his time. See? At the breaking of that seal. We know exactly what it was. Who is this man of iniquity? Who is this man of sin? This fellow that's a working iniquity. But he be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Deceivers, you see. Deceiving the people off into something. See? Only he, God, that led us will let until he, the church, Christ the bride, be taken out of the way, and then shall the wicked one be revealed at the breaking of the seal, at his time. Paul said, not in my time, but in the time when he'll be revealed. See? Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. We're going to get to that after a while. The spirit of his mouth. Watch what that is. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. Him, him, a man, whose working is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivedness of unrighteousness, deceiving people by unrighteousness, in them that perish, not this bride, Amen. in them that's looking for such a thing, because they receive not the love of the truth, and Christ is the truth, Amen. and Christ is the Word, Amen. but they better have a creed, Amen. that they might be saved, and for this cause God has sent them strong delusion that they should believe a, a lie. It should be translated there as so looked in the lesson, the lie. Not a lie, the lie. Same one he told Eve. That they might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. What a statement. Mom. After the bride is taken away, then this man of sin will reveal himself. She, the true bride of Christ, has been elected out of every church age. Now, the other day I made a statement. The bride could go home and you'll never know anything about it. That's true. Somebody said, uh, well, Brother Branham, that would be a mighty small group. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. I, you talk to him about it. Wherein eight souls were saved by water. So shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. If they were eight hundred went in the rapture tonight, you'd never hear a word about it tomorrow or the next day or no other time. He'd be gone. He didn't know nothing about it. It'd just be the same thing. What am I trying to say? I'm not trying to scare you, weary you. Um, I want you to be on your toes. Amen. Be ready, watching every minute. Quit your <laughs> nonsense. Just get out to business with God. Because it's later than you think. Amen. Now remember, the true bride. Now there is a false bride. We get that in Revelation 17. He said, I am a widow and have no need of nothing. You see, sitting up on this scarlet cold beast and so forth, the beast rather. Now, but the true bride will be made up of thousands times thousands of people. But it will be the elect out of every church age. Every time a message went forth, 
and the people believed it and accepted it and all the light it was when they were sealed away until that day of redemption. Well, Jesus speaks the same thing when he said, uh, the, the sound come and uh, the seventh watch, that's the last church age, okay? and said, uh, Behold, the bridegroom come and go out to meet him. And then the sleeping virgin come, rub their eyes and said, Suppose I already have some in oil too, so uh, maybe you better have some. And the real, true bride said, so we just got enough for ourselves. <laughs> we just got enough to get in ourselves. We can't give you nothing. If you want something, you go pray up. And while she was gone, the bridegroom come. And in went the bride. And then the remnant there, the ones that were absolutely virgins, the church was left outside. And he said, there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. See? Now, that's the elect. And when the sound come, the bridegroom cometh, then every one of those that slept down through those ages awaken. Every one. See, it isn't God as we'd think just sort of hunt him out a few thousand people of this age and take them. It's the very elected out of ever age. Amen. And that's the reason Christ has to stay on the meteorite seat back there as an intercessor until that last one comes in at the last age. And these revelations then of what has been breaks forth upon the people and they see what's happened. You get it now? Amen. All right. Notice the rest of the dead church members live not again until 1,000 years has passed. The church members, the, the Christians, the church live not again until the end of the thousand years and then they come forth to stand before the bride. That's right. Stand before the king and the queen. Glory. Some church today calls herself the queen of heaven. The queen of heaven is the selected bride of Christ. And she comes with him. Daniel saw it and said, ten thousand times ten thousands minister to him. Now if you watch the scripture there in Daniel, judgment was set and the books were open. Now remember, when he come, he come with his bride. The wife ministers to her husband. And ten thousand times ten thousands of thousands minister to him. Judgment was set and the books were open and another book was open, which is the book of life. Yeah. Not the bride at all. She's done gone up and come back. Yeah. And standing there in judgment of those generations that refused the gospel message. Didn't Jesus say the queen of the south shall rise with this generation in her days of the judgment and will condemn this generation for she came from the utmost parts of the world to hear the wisdom of Solomon and a greater than Solomon this year. Amen. There stood the, uh, the judgment, the queen of, uh, of Sheba of the south stood there in the judgment and her own testimony, not even a Jew, came up with that generation that was Jew. And they were blind and missed him because they were looking for him, but he comes so simple that they went plumb on the top of it like that. Amen. And there the great queen humbled herself and come and accepted the message. Amen. And she'll stand in the judgment, he said, and condemn that generation. I see the three classes always, the book, the dead, were judged out. Another book, the book of life. Them who had their names in the book of life, they said, if your name is in the book of life, it's all right, huh? No, sir. Look, Judas is a carrot. Had his name in the book of life. I say that's wrong. Jesus, in Matthew 10, gave them power to cast out devils and sent them forth to heal the sick and to cleanse the lepers and raise the dead. And they went out and returned back 
Judas right with them. And they cast out devils and done all kinds of miracles and returned back and said, even the devils is subject unto us. Jesus said, don't rejoice that the devils is subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And Judas was with them. But what happened? When it come down to the elected group to go up there at Pentecost and really receive the Holy Spirit, Judas showed his color. He'd be there in the judgment. So the books was open and the book, the life was open and every man was judged thus. Now the bride's standing there with Christ to judge the world. Don't the Paul say, dare you talking to the bride? having a, any manner of grievance against each other, that you go to the unjust law, don't you know the saints shall judge the earth? Amen. There you are. The saints is going to judge the earth and take it over. Amen. Right. See, how in the world's a little group like that? I don't know how it's going to be done, but he said it's going to be done. So that just settles it as far as I know. I know. Now, Notice the rest of the dead, the church members, dead church members, live not again until a thousand years, and then at the thousand years they were gathered, another resurrection come, which is second resurrection, and they were gathered, and Christ and the church, the bride, not the church, the bride, Christ and the queen, not the church, church Christ and the bride, stood there and they were separated like the sheep from the goats. <laughs> right. There's the church members come up. And if they heard the truth and rejected the truth, then what's going to be said when the big things spread across the canvas when even your own thoughts will be there? Amen. What you thought about. I go to escape and it's right on the canvas of the skies and God's great television. There's your own thoughts rebelling around. Your own thoughts will speak against you in that hour. So if you speak one thing and think another, you better stop that. Get your thoughts on God. Keep them pure and stay right there with it and speak the same thing all the time. Don't say, well, I'll say I believe it, but I'll go find out. You believe it. Amen. Notice, these types, reason they die out they go through the purging of trial of the tribulation because they're not actually under the blood. They claim they are, but they're not. How can they go through a trial to purify them when there's when the bleached blood of Jesus Christ takes every symptom of sin and stuff away? And you're already dead, and your life is hidden in Him through God and sealed in there by the Holy Ghost. What are you going to be judged for? Where are you going to get your purification? What do you have to be purified from? When you're perfectly in Christ sinless. All right, what's the judgment for? But it's a sleeping bunch of them people can't make out. Now, they haven't done it for years. See, But this is the hour of revelation. See? Being revealed. Just at the coming of the bride, the last winding up, the last things are coming, it's coming to an end, friend, I believe. When, I don't know. I, I can't tell you, but anything, I want to live tonight like if it was tonight, I'd be ready. Amen. He might come tonight yet, and he might not come for 20 years, I don't know when he'll come. But whenever it is, uh, and my life might be over tonight. And then whatever I've done here, it's finished at that hour. I, I've got to meet him in the judgment the way I went out here, the way there's a tree leaves, that's the way it falls. Remember, when they went to buy oil, they always say, now, wait a minute, Brother Bram, I don't know about that. When they went to buy oil, when they come back, the bride was done gone. And the door was shut, and they knocked and said, let us in, let us in. But they were out in outer darkness. Now, if you want a type of that, now look, in the time of Noah, Jesus said, referred to it. Now, in Noah's time, they went into the ark, but they were carried over during the time of the judgment. But that, that didn't type Christ's bride. 
Enoch typed the bride. Amen. Enoch, Noah, went over through the bride, went over through the tribulation period, and suffered and become a drunk and died. But Enoch walked before God for 500 years and had a testimony he pleased God with raptured faith and just started walking right out and went up to the skies and went home without even tasting death. Never died at all. That's a type of we which are alive and remain shall not prevent or hinder those same type of people that are asleep. They fell asleep on account of the human age and the, and the state of human age. They died back there, but they're not dead. They are sleeping. Amen. Amen. They are asleep, not dead. And the only thing it needs is the bridegroom to wake them. Amen. And we which are alive and remain shall not hinder those that's already fell asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, and will meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And the rest of the dead live not for a thousand years. There you are. They went through the tribulation period. What was it? Like Enoch. You know, Noah watched Enoch. For when Enoch come up missing, he knew judgment was at hand. He got to hanging around the ark. But Noah didn't go up. He just lifted a little piece off and rolled over the tribulations. He was carried through the tribulation period to die the death. See? But Noah was carried through. Enoch was translated without death. A type of the church being caught up with those who are asleep to meet the Lord in the air, and the rest of the church is carried over into the tribulation period. They make nothing else out of it myself. Enoch raptured, no death. Now, uh, let's start studying a little now. Get down here. Let's nice keep on that. We never will get into the seal. Now, notice. Let's take now, because we're going to have a long, maybe tomorrow night or next night, Hit a trumpet now and then because the trumpet sounds at the same time the seals is just the same thing. The church age opens but it's just the same thing. Now a trumpet always denotes war or otherwise political disturbance. The trumpet does. A political disturbance and that causes war. When you go to get messed in politics you get them all messed up like we got it now look out. <laughs> War is at hand. But, see, the kingdom still belongs to Satan. He's still got this part in his hand because why? It is redeemed by Christ, but he's doing the part of the kinsman redeemer, taking his subject until the last one name is put on that book, has already received it and been sealed away. Now, do you got it? Then he comes from his throne, his father's throne, walks forward, takes the book out of God's hand from the throne and claims his right. Amen. The first thing he does is call for his bride. Amen. Amen. Then what does he take? He takes his opponent, Satan, and binds him and casts him into the fire out there with all his following. Amen. Now remember, it wasn't Russia. <laughs> no, the Antichrist is a smooth fellow. Just watch how smooth he is. He's smart. Yeah. Yes, sir. Just take the Holy Spirit before they can outdo him. Amen. Notice. Trumpet means political disturbance. Wars. Matthew 24, Jesus spoke of it. He said, you will hear of wars and rumors of war. See, all the way down through. You remember this, Jesus speaking that. Wars, rumors, and wars, and rumors, and wars, and put on down to the end. Now, that's the trumpet sounding. Now, when we get on the trumpets, We'll go back there and pick up each one of them wars and show you that they follow them churches. Amen. Show you they follow these seals. <laughs> wars and rumors of war. But trumpet denotes political disturbance. Whereas seals deals with the religious disturbance. See? A seal is open, a message is dropped. And then 
the church is always so set up in its own political ways and whatever more and all of its dignitary and when that real message drops down that messenger goes forth and he shakes them to pieces that's right it's religious disturbance when a seal's open that's what's happened yes they get all at ease in Zion the church gets all settled down and we got it all made just like the church of England it's all settled down the Catholic church all settled down and long come Luther there's a religious disturbance <laughs> yes sir sure was well the church went on off of Swingley and from Swingley come on down to different ones and to Calvin and after a while the Anglican church settled down and it was just at ease now, long come Wesley that was a religious disturbance. <laughs> right. See, it always denotes a uh, religious disturbance. Now, the seal. Let's just read it a little bit now. I want to, to get this. this we read it. I get to talking. I, and I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. What happened? And I heard as it was a noise of a thunder. Oh, how I'd like to dwell on that just a few minutes. I hope now that all the people that know these things and are waiting for the consolation of the Lord will now study real close. And on the tapes also, that you'll think of this. The first thing happened when that lamb broke that first seal of thunder roared. Now that's got a significance. It's got, it's, it's got a meaning. It's a meaning. Nothing happens without a meaning. All right. A thunder. A thunder roared. wonder what that thunder was. Uh, let's read a little bit. Let's turn to Matthew. No, let's say St. John first. St. John 12, chapter. And just hold it a minute. St. John, the 12th chapter. And now let's begin with the 23rd verse of St. John 12. Now listen here now real close. And you won't have to wonder no more what it is. And Jesus answering them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. See, you're at the end of an age. His ministry is ended. The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. What about the hour has come that when his bride must be taken away? What the hour has come, the time shall be no more. The angel is ready to set one foot on the land and the other on the sea with a rainbow over him with feet and say, Time's run out. And the beside John raised up his hand and swore that time would be no more when this happened. How how perfect it is a sworn affidavit to the church. The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. You say, well, him coming to the end of the road and you got trouble? What does it make you think when some great spiritual something happens that troubles you? Oh, my. <laughs> now in my soul trouble, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this, unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people said that stood by that heard it, they said it's thunder. Then, when the lamb touched the book and broke that first seal, God spoke from his eternal throne to say what that seal was to be revealed. But when he placed before John, it was in a symbol. When John saw it, it was still a mystery. Why? It wasn't even revealed right then. It cannot be revealed until what he said here at the end time. 
but a coming assembly. When the thunder, remember, a loud clapping noise of a thunder is the voice of God. That's what the Bible says. That's the thunder. They thought it was a thunder, but it was God. He understood it, for it was revealed to him. See? It was a thunder, and notice, the first seal opened. The first seal, when it was opened, in the symbol form, it thundered. Now what about when it's open in its reality form? <laughs> it thundered as soon as the Lamb struck back the seal. And what did it reveal? Not all of itself. First it's a God. Next it's in a symbol. Then it's revealed. Three things. See? It's coming forth from the throne. First it can't be seen, heard, or nothing. It's sealed up. The Lamb's blood paid the price. It thundered when he spoke it out. And when he did, a white horse rider started out. And it still was a symbol. Now watch. He said it would be known in the last days. But it comes forth in a church symbol. Uh, do you understand it, church? Amen. It comes forth in a, a symbol of a church as they know there is a seal, but just what it is yet they don't know. Because it's a white horse rider. And only is to be revealed at the last day when this actual seal is broken. Broken to who? Not to Christ, but to the church. Amen. Notice. Now, oh my, that just makes me tremble. I, I, I hope that the church truly understands it. That's what I mean, you people. I'm going to call you bride. <laughs> that you understand it. The voice is a thunder. The voice came from where? From the throne where the Lamb had just left as intercessor. Now he's standing here to take his position and he's clean. But the thunder came from the inside of the throne, thundered out. And the Lamb was standing out here. The thunder where the Lamb had left left the Father's throne to go to take His own throne. Amen. Glory. Amen. I, I don't miss it, friends. We all know as Christians that God swore to David that He would raise up Christ to sit on His throne and give Him an everlasting kingdom here on the earth. Amen. He did it. And Jesus said, He that overcomes the Antichrist and all the things of the world shall sit with me on my throne as I have overcome and have sat down on my Father's throne. Amen. Amen. Now someday he rises from the Father's throne and goes to take his own throne. Amen. Now he comes forth to call his subjects. How is he going to claim them? He's already got the book of redemption. Yeah. Glory. Oh, I feel like singing a hymn. <laughs> Soon the Lamb will take his bride to be ever at his side. All the host of heaven will assemble thee to watch that. For it will be a glorious sight. All the saints in spotless white and with Jesus we shall feast Eternal. Oh, my. Talk about setting down in heavenly places. What will it be if we can feel this way, setting down here on earth before the rapture comes in this condition that we're in now? And we can enjoy it, stand up around walls and stand in the rain just to hear this. What will it be when we see Him setting down? Oh, my. Oh, it'll be a glorious time. Let the Father's Son came forth to his son to be the he is the son of David. That's what the Israel thought he would do then. Remember the Ethiopian woman said, Thou son of David. Yes. Remember blind Barney Mayor, thou son of David. Yes. And Jesus, knowing what the plan was, yet they didn't know it, they tried to force him to make him take the throne. 
And even Pilate asked him. But he said, if my kingdom is in this world, then my subject could fight. My kingdom is above. But he said, when you pray, pray, thy kingdom come, thine will be done. In earth, here like it is in heaven. Amen. How glorious the great thing was. Left the Father's throne to take his own throne. He now has come forth from his intercessory work to claim his own throne, his redeemed subjects. That's what he come forth from the throne to do. It is then that the lion like creature said to John, Come see. What? Are you reading it? One of the seals and it as if it was the noise of a thunder and one of the four beasts you know what the beasts were we took them one like a lion one like a calf and one like a man and one like an eagle now this first beast said watch each time is a different beast so then four horse riders passed these four beasts and these four horse riders notice each one of that beast announced Matthew, Mark, Mark, Luke, and John. We're going to get back in and prove which one Matthew, Mark, which one Mark, Mark, which one the John, each one as they went. Now, oh, one of the beasts saying, come see. You heard the noise of the thunder. And one of the beasts said, now come see. In other words, I hear stands the lamb. And John's standing out there watching it happen. The lamb come up from the throne like he'd been slaying blood all over him. He was the one that was found worthy. And when he reached over and took the book, then everything began to shout and scream and carry on, you see, because they know redemption was paid for. Now, he's come to claim his own. So he takes the book, stands out there before John, and he pulls it back and breaks the seal, pulls the seal down. And when he pulls the seal down, a thunder cracks through the place. And when a thunderclap, no doubt, John might have jumped up in the air when a thunder roared. And then one of the four beasts said, Now, come see what it is. What's revealed beneath here? Oh, my. John, write what you see. So, John goes to look see what it was. John goes to see what the thunder said. It's then that this creature told John, come and see what the mystery is under the first seal. The thunder, the voice of the Creator has uttered it. Now, he ought to know what's there. Oh, But think, now he wrote this, but when he started to write those other seven thunders, he said, don't write it. He had been commissioned to write everything he's seen. But when these seven thunders over in Revelation 10 uttered, he said, don't write them at all. There are mysteries. We don't know what they are yet. But my opinion, they'll be revealed right away. And when it do, it'll give faith to that rapture and grace to that church. We've just moved through everything that we know of, through all the dispensations. We've watched everything. We've seen the mysteries of God. We've seen the appearing of the, of the great uh, gathering together of the bride in the last days. But yet there's something in there that we just can't lighten ourselves with. There's something other. But I imagine when that mystery begins to come forth, God said, hold it back now. Wait a minute, I'll reveal it in that day. Don't ride it all, John, because it's stagger over it. Just let it go. But I'll reveal it in that day when have leave it. They never uttered for nothing. You remember like the little drop of ink, everything is for a purpose. Amen. Everything's for a cause. But notice, the Creator uttered. And He... Uh, he heard this voice and he went to see. But now the Lamb is showing John in the symbol of of uh, of uh, church scripture, like for the church to know what to write. He just jumps and I don't don't tell this just what it is. Don't go down, John, and say now this is just what this is. Now what's under this seventh seal? Don't don't go down and tell that. For if I tell John that, then all down through the age the whole plan will be broke. It's a secret. He just wants to, uh, it's coming. He said, I, I, nobody's going to know when I'm coming. I'm just coming. Yeah. That's all. It ain't for my business. No, when I just be ready, you see. Yeah. So uh, then he said, now John went forth. He thought, I'm going to see it now. And what did he do? When John went forth, he, now what's he got to do? Now he's got to write this to the church age. 
And that's what he's supposed to do. Write it to the church agent. Write what you see of these seven golden candlesticks at the beginning. Write to this church and tell them. All right? And the thunder went off. John knew it was the voice of God. And then the, the lion-like creature said, Come see what it was. And John went forth now with his pen to write what he was going to see. Now, he never seen exactly what it was. He never understood it. But what he saw was what God was sending to the church for a time. Amen. Now, he's got, he will. He always does. He makes it plain when it's time to make it plain. Yes. Yes. But he didn't make it plain then. Why? Because he's going to keep it a secret until the last age. And the sounding of the last angel's message was to gather up these mysteries. Yes. Yes. Just make it clear. But what John saw, he just seen a white horse go out with a rider on it. So that's what he wrote down. When he did, that's what he said. Come see. So John went to see what he could see to ride through the church. And when he did, he saw a white horse. And him that sat on it had a bow. And he went forth conquering. And to conquer, and there was given to him a crown. And that's, that's all John saw. So he just wrote, wrote that down. Now see, that's in symbol. That's the way the church has received it. But with the promise that at the last day, He'd redeem it. Show what it is. God help us to understand. Yes, Lord. Church agent. But is not made fully known till the seventh message of the last church age. Notice he starts this messenger of the seventh church age, if you'll notice it. He doesn't start a denomination like the rest of them do. Wherever if he doesn't start. No. If you find out, he's against it. Was Elijah was Elijah against it? Sure he was. Was John against it with Elijah's spirit? What kind of a spirit did Elijah have on him? He was nobody knows much about him. He was just a man, but he was a prophet. He was hated, my and what time did he rise? Right in the time of the popularity of Israel when it all went whirly. And he got her out there and he was a woman hater. Amen. Sure was. And he loved the wilderness. That was his nature. Then that people ought to know when that fellow come out there with that same spirit on him. Amen. Come out there this John. Not dressed all up like the celebrity. As I said last night, they kiss the babies and Mary and Barry and so forth. But this man come out as a wilderness man. Amen. What was he? He loved the wilderness. Amen. Another thing he done, he hated the nomination. Amen. He said, now don't you begin to say we belong to this or that. Uh-huh. For I'll tell you, God's able these stones right to the neighbor. Amen. He was no compromiser. They couldn't have said, did you go to see a reed shaking with wind? <laughs> Not John. No, sir. What did he do also? Just like Elijah had told Jezebel, he told her earlier. Walked right up to Herod's face and said, it's not lawful for you to have her. She chopped his head off for her. She tried to get Elijah. That same spirit was in Jezebel was in that woman. And the same thing is in the Jezebel church today. Now, notice it. What a great lesson we find here. And now, looks like those people would have known. John began to bawl them people out and stand there look like they'd have known that was that spirit of Elisha. They should have understood that. That's what it was. Now, and we find out and have through the church ages according to the scripture that we are promised a return of that spirit just before the end. Is that true? Now, and notice, you'll notice the nature of it. Now, he will not start another church age like Luther and Wesley and all the rest of them did. He won't start another church because there is no more church age to start. See? There won't be any more. So he must be against it because his spirit will be just exactly like they were back there. The same spirit, as I said last night, it pleased God to use it three different times. That's the number, three, not two, three. It's already used it twice. Now he's going to use it again. He said so. He promised it. Now notice. He uh, noticed now what he did. He 
He's not going to start a denomination because the lady of the church age is the last age. And a messenger of the seventh angel, which is the seventh messenger to the seventh church age, is the fella that is going to reveal by the Holy Spirit all these mysterious things that is going to... How many were here last night? Let's see your hand. I guess I won't have to read over then. You know just where it's at. The 10th chapter. Uh, uh, all right. All right. The reformers came to reform the last fallen church age preceding them. And then, after the reformers come and reform the, the church age from where it was and went back into the world, then they start a new church age. Always done. Always. Uh, we went through that. Yeah. See? In other words, here had been a Catholic church age, the Roman Catholic church. Long come Luther, a reformer. He's called a reformer. And what does he do? He starts out there to hammer it away. And when he does, he protests the church. And the first thing you know, what does he do? He builds the same thing that he come to drive out of. Another church. Then they have another church age. Then the first thing you know, here comes the church age is such a mess. Along comes John Wesley, another reformer. He builds another church age. Get what I mean? Another church age is built up. They're all reformers. Notice, this last message of the last church age is not a reformer. He is a prophet. Amen. Not a reformer. Show me where one prophet ever started church age. He's not a reformer. He is a prophet. Others was reformers, but not prophets. So if they would have been, the word of the Lord comes to the prophet. That's the reason they continued on in the baptism and Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and all these other things. Amen. Because they were reformers and not prophets. Amen. But yet they were a great man of God and saw the need of the day that they lived in. And God anointed them and is sent out there and tore those things to pieces. Amen. But the full word of God never come to them because they was not prophets. They were reformers. Amen. But in the last days, it'll have to be a prophet to take up the mysteries of God and bring it back because the mysteries is only renowned by the prophets. So it has to be this fellow come. See what I mean now? It can't be a reformer. It's got to be a prophet. Because it's got to be somebody that's gifted and set there that catches the word. Now them reformers know there was something wrong. Luther know that that, that, that bread wasn't the body of Christ. But so he preached that just shall live by faith and that was his message. And when John Wesley come along, he saw that there was sanctification. So he preached sanctification that was his message. See? The Pentecostals brought in the message of the Holy Ghost and so forth. But in the last days, in this last age, the messenger is not to start any reformation, but is to Take all the mysteries that those reformers left off and gather them together and solve them to the people. Amen. Let me just read it again. It sounds so good to me. I, I like to read it. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, a rainbow upon his head, and his face was the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Now we saw the same thing, which was Christ. And we know Christ is always a messenger to the church. All right. He's called a pillar of fire, the angel of the covenant, and so forth. And he had in his hand a little book opened. Ah, the seals have done been broke here. We're breaking them now, but this is the thing's open. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left on the earth. And he cried a loud voice as when a lion roared. And when he cried, seven thunders uttered their voice. Ah, the complete. When the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I, John, was about to write, write what, what they said. And I heard a voice from heaven, God, saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Don't write them. See? And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea lifted up his hands to heaven and swear by him that lives forever and ever who created the heavens and the things in there they are, and the earth and the things that are there in there, and the sea and the things which are therein, 
that there should be time no longer. Watch. Don't forget this now as we go. But in the days, days of the voice of the seventh angel, that last angel, earthly angel, this angel come down from heaven. It wasn't him. He come from heaven, but he's speaking here the voice of the seventh angel, which is an angel means a messenger. Anybody knows that? And a messenger to the church age in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery. Seven seal. Oh, all the mysteries. Of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants the prophets. The entire mystery is unfolded. That's the ministry of that angel. Be so simple. People just drop on the top of it. But yet it'll be perfectly vindicated. It will just be perfectly. Everybody that wants to see it can see it. Right. But the Lord Jesus said, as he said, when he comes, said, you got eyes and can't see. Isaiah said you did. You got ears and can't hear. Now, um, so we find out that uh, that scared me. I looked back at that clock and I thought it was 10 o'clock. But it's, oh, uh, I, I got a, it ain't even nine yet. <laughs> All right. Oh, my. Let's get it now. Notice. I love this. Others reformers, but by being great man of God, seen the need of the day and brought forth reformation. But Revelations 10 said his message was to reveal, not reform, reveal the secrets. Reveal secrets. It's a word in the man. Hebrews 4 said that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword, a piercing even to the son of the bone, and a revealer of the secrets of the heart. Amen. See? This man is not a reformer. He's a revealer. Amen. Revealer of what? The mysteries of God. Amen. Where the church has got it all tied up and everything, he says, come forth with the word of God and reveal the thing out. Because he is to restore the faith of the children back to the Father. Amen. The original Bible faith is to be restored by the seventh angel. Now, oh, how I love this. All the mysteries of the seals that the reformers never understood fully. See? Now, look at Malachi 4. Just a minute. Well, you just mark it down. He is a prophet and restores the original faith of the fathers. Now we're looking for that person to appear on the scene. He'll be so humble. Uh, ten millions times ten millions. Of, well, there'll be a little group. <laughs> understand. When, you remember the other day when John was supposed to come prophesied a messenger before Christ come a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Malachi saw him. Look, the third chapter of Malachi is the coming of the Elijah that was to come and forerun the coming of Christ. Yeah. You say, oh, no, no, Brother Brandon, it's the fourth chapter. I beg your pardon. Jesus said it was the third chapter. Yeah. Now, take Saint, uh, you take Saint, uh, Matthew, uh, the 11th chapter, the sixth verse. You'll, you'll say this, the 11th chapter, I believe it's the sixth verse, fourth, fifth, or sixth, right along there. He said, uh, if you can receive it, we're talking about John, this is he who was spoken of, I'll send my messenger before my face. I read Malachi 3. Amen. Some of them try to apply it to Malachi 4. No, sir. No, no. That's not it. Notice Malachi 4, as soon as that messenger goes forth, the world is completely burned and the righteous walk out in the millennium of the ashes of them. So you see, if you put that being... Him back there, then, then the Bible told something that wasn't so. We've had 2,000 years, and the world ain't burning up yet, and the righteous living in it. So it's got to be in the future. Oh, if you go here in Revelation and see what that messenger at the end of this age is supposed to do, then you'll see what it is. He must be a prophet. He's got to catch these ends that these reformers didn't see and place it in there. 
How can Matthew 28, 19 compare with Acts 2, 38 without the spiritual revelation of God? Amen. How can these people say that days of miracles are past and so forth like that and <laughs> without revelation of God? But the only way they'll ever know it. Amen. No words right or wrong. But they've come through seminaries. I hope we have time to get into them. I want to hurry because I don't want to keep you here over a week. You know what I mean? When I just uh, open these seals. I've got one day and I'd like to have prayer for the sick on that day if I could. Now look Malachi 4. He's a prophet and restores the original faith of the fathers. At the end time, when the tribulation period comes, now here's the little thing we're going to reverse back a minute, where the three and a half years are Daniel's 70 weeks, the last half of Daniel's 70 weeks, which is three and one half years. Now we, how many remembers that from the church ages? Yeah, the 70 weeks determined, look how perfect it was, that Messiah will come and he'll be cut off for a sacrifice in the midst of the week and the obligation will cease. Then there is still three and a half years waited for the Messiah doctrine to the Jews. And God does not deal with the Jew and the Gentile at the same time. He deals with Israel as a nation, Gentile as an individual. He never taken the Gentiles for his bride. He's taken a people out of the Gentiles. Okay? Now he deals with Israel as a nation. And now there she sits right there now as a nation. I got a letter from Paul today, Paul Boyd. And he was telling me, he said, Brother Branham, how true it is. These Jews still have a funny feeling towards the Gentiles no matter what's happened. Sure they will. Yeah. They got to. When Martin Luther made the proclamation that all Jews are to be run off and their buildings burnt down because they were antichrist. See? Martin Luther made that statement himself in his writing. Now Hitler just fulfilled what Martin Luther said. Why did Martin Luther say that? Because he was a reformer, not a prophet. Yeah. God, that my prophet blessed Israel. He said, Whosoever blesses you will be blessed. Who curses you will be cursed. Yes. How can one prophet stand and deny what the other prophet says? Yes. You can't do it. It's got to be in harmony. Yes. But that's the reason they class. See, Germany is supposed to be a Christian nation. And the way they treated Israel, they still got a stick on their shoulder, and you can't blame them. But just remember, if the Jews sitting here, don't you worry, the day's coming. Yes. God can never forget them. They were blinded for our sake. You know, he said to the prophet, he, the prophet cried out, said, will you forget Israel? He said, take that measure stick sticking high, high as the sky. How deep is the sea? They said, I couldn't measure. He said, never can I forget Israel. That's his people, his servants. And the Gentile is only a few taken out of there for his bride. That's exactly right. That's the bride. Now, the 70 weeks was determined perfectly as Daniel said that Messiah would come and would be cut off in the midst of the week. And Jesus prophesied three and a half years. Now, in the middle of this three and a half years of Daniel, in the middle of it is cut off, and now the last part is the tribulation period where the Gentile church is, oh, this is great, and I don't mean it, the bride goes in with the groom. Then after the millennium walks out upon the ashes of the wicked. Let me show you something here. Just why we just got it in mind. Let's just show you what it says. What the Bible says. And we can't deny this in the Word of God. If we do, then we're in for this. See, we've got to believe. You say, I don't understand it, neither do I. But I'm looking for Him to reveal it. Amen. Look. For behold, a day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, like the Americans and so forth, yea, all that do wickedly shall be stubble. It's going to burn. And the day that cometh that shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, it shall leave them neither root or branch. I got eternal hell in there then. See, it's the last days when these things are being revealed. There's no place in the Bible that says hell's eternal. To, to, have, to be in an eternal hell, you'd have to have eternal life to stay there. Amen. There's only one form of eternal life, and that's what we're struggling for. Amen. Everything had a beginning, has an end. Hell was created for the devil and his angels and will be consumed and done away with. Amen. Right. See, but when this takes place, it neither leaves them root or branch. But unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in his wings. 
ye shall go forth as uh, grow up as calves of the stall, and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in that day that I will do this, saith the Lord of hosts. Where's the wicked going to be? After the tribulation, ashes. Remember the laws of Moses, which I commanded him in heart for all Israel with the statutes and judgment. Behold, I will send to you Elijah the prophet before the coming of that great and dreadful day of the Lord. Amen. Here's the Old Testament closing out like that, and here's the New Testament closing out with the very same name. I go to keep it away. Amen. Look, I will send to you Elijah the prophet before that day comes, and he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. <laughs> there you are. That's the word of the Lord. We promised it. It must come. And now, if you notice how this happens, it's beautiful how God does it. The bride goes forth and with the groom. And, and then after that, the wicked is burned with unquenchable fire. And after the world has been purified, reproduces itself. Everything has to do that. Has to go through a state of purification. Volcanic will break forth in that great last time, and the world will burst and belch and go forth, and all these cesspools of sin and all that's up on the earth will be molded into nothing. It'll burn with such a fervent heat that'll be like that bleach that sends the the color of uh, the ink back into its original creation. So will the fire from God be so hot that'll turn every filthy thing back to it condition again when Satan and all sin is burned up Amen. and everything and then she'll come forth as beautiful as she was in the Garden of Eden. Amen. Right. Amen. Oh, that great hour laying just ahead of us. During the tribulation period, here's what I want you to notice. Now, a little thing I dropped in here. During this tribulation period, after the bride has been called out and the church goes through the tribulation period, the 144,000 is called Amen. by the two witnesses of Revelation 11. Amen. Now look, they have prophesied 1,203 score days, clothed in sackcloth. Now, we know this Roman calendar has, we got 28 days and sometimes 30 and 31, but actually the calendar reads this 30 days to every month. Amen. Right. And take a hundred. 1,203 score days and put 30 to it and see what you got. Amen. <laughs> Three and one half years exactly on the dot. Amen. That's the time, that's a lot of time for the Messiah message to be preached to Israel like it was back there when he returns back Amen. and makes himself known in the symbol that when he comes, when Joseph was taken down into the country and was rejected by his brother and because he was a spiritual man he could see visions and interpret dreams. And when he did, he was taken down into the country and was sold for almost 30 pieces of silver. He portrayed Christ exactly because it's Christ's spirit. Notice what happened then. And notice that when he did this, he was put in a prison. And one man was saved and the other lost. Exactly Jesus when he was in prison on the cross. One thief was saved and the other was lost. Exactly. Sold into the grave, supposed to be dead, and was stuck up and ascended to the right hand of Pharaoh that nobody could see Pharaoh without seeing Joseph first. Right. Jesus sits at the right hand of God and no man can come to the Father except for the Son. Amen. Right. Amen. I notice every time Joseph left, when Joseph rose up from that right hand of that throne, lost glory! Oh. There sat Joseph at the right hand of Pharaoh. Yeah. And when Joseph raised up, to leave that throne, the trumpet sounded. Amen. Bow the knee, everybody. Amen. Joseph is coming. Amen. When that lamb leaves the throne yonder on his days of mentorial work, when he leaves the throne up there and takes that book of redemption and walks forth, every knee will bow. Amen. 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 There he is. Notice. And when Joseph, rejected by his brethren, he was given a Gentile wife. Amen. Potiphar give him, or Pharaoh give him uh, a Gentile wife. And he bore Gentile children, half Gentile and Jew. They give a great symbol of when Jacob was blessing him, 
Ephraim on one side, Manasseh on the other, he crossed his hand and gave the younger child a blessing. And the two kids was added unto the twelve tribes, which is only ten at that time, and he blessed them in Jacob himself. And Joseph, his prophet's son, standing there, said, Father, you have done wrong. Said, you put your right hand blessing on the young child where it ought to went on the old. And he said, I know my hands is crossed, but God has crossed them. Why? Israel, having the rights to be a bride, rejected and sold her birthrights and the, went from the old son, Israel, to the new Gentile, and the blessings went from there through the cross. Amen. Amen. But notice, after that, see, through that, when all he took his bride, but when them boys came down to buy food, oh, it's such a beautiful picture. I'm off on the seal, but I just got to say it. Because you'll get the picture better, I believe. Notice. Now, when he come down to buy food, you know, Joseph recognized him right away. And Joseph was the son of prosperity. No matter where he went, it always prospered. You wait till he comes to the earth again. Wait till our Joseph comes. The desert shall blossom as a rose. And the sun arises, rises with healing in his wings. Oh, my. All that cactus around Arizona will unfold into a beautiful tree. It'll be beautiful. Notice, here he comes forth and he plays a little trick on him there. And he stands and he says, Is my father still living? See, you won't know if that boy's father was living. He said, Yes. You know that was his brother. But did you notice? When he got ready to reveal himself to his brother, and he found little Benjamin, which had been born since he had been gone. And that represents these Jews, there's 144,000 scattered right there now, since he's been gone. And when he returned, he said, uh, he looked at Benjamin, his heart was about to break. And remember, they, had, they didn't know he could speak Hebrew. He was taking an interpreter. He acted like he's an Egyptian. Amen. See? And then when it was made known, he wanted to make himself known, he kept looking at little Benjamin. And remember, he dismissed his wife. Yes. She was in the palace. Right. When he made himself known to his brethren, yes. and the Gentile bride, the wife, after Jesus being rejected by his own people, he has taken a Gentile bride and will take her from here to the palace, to his father's house, and glory for the wedding supper and will slip back down to make himself known to his brothers the oh, 144,000. There he stands. And remember, look at the symbol perfectly. And when he come back to where this was, he looked down to them and he said, uh, he said, uh, begin to look. And they begin to talk. They said, uh, now, Reuben, you know that we're in for it now. See? Because, you know what we've done? We've got this boy in this fix. Now, we oughtn't just sold our brother. That was her brother standing there, that mighty prince, and they didn't know it. That's the reason Israel can't understand him today. And there's the hour yet to know it. And then, he, they thought he couldn't understand Hebrew, but he's listening right at him. <laughs> they said, now we're in for it. And Joseph, when he looked at him, he couldn't stand it no longer. I remember his wife and children was in the palace at the time. The saints going out. Out of the prison. And he said, I'm Joseph, your brother. And he ran over and grabbed little vision and fell on his neck and began to cry. And he made himself known. And then he said, now we know we got it coming. Well, we sold him. We was the one who sold him off. We was the one who tried to kill him. Now we know he'll kill us. He said, no, don't be angry with yourself. You only done it to preserve life. That's why God sent me down here. And when he makes himself known, the Bible said as we come to it, when he makes himself known to 144,000 there, the little Benjamin of the day, and the remnant of those Jews left there, when he makes himself known, they'll say, where did you get those scars? That's right. What are they doing in your hand? He said, oh, I got them in the house of my friends. <laughs> oh, then they'll realize that they have killed the Messiah. Amen. But what will he say? The same as Joseph did it. You did it to serve life. Don't to save life. Don't be angry with yourself. Because if the Gentiles would not have been brought in if the Jews hadn't have done that blindfolded trick. Amen. 
So he saved the life of the church for the things that they've done. So there you are. That's the reason today they can't understand this. It isn't the hour. No more we can understand these things until the time comes for it to be understood. Oh, my. Heaven thunders of revelation may show the bride how to prepare for the great translation faith. Now, let's hurry up because we haven't got about 15, 20 minutes yet. Now, what does this white horse mean? Let me read this. I've been so far off. Excuse me for getting off my subject. But, but uh, uh, I'll read the verse again, the two verses. And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard as it was a noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Now we're going to the second verse. A white horse. And he that sat on him had a bowl. And a crown was given him. He didn't have it then. Unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's all of that. That's the seal. Now let's find the symbol. We found what the thunder means. That's perfectly. We know that. See, The thunder was the voice of God when the seal opened. Now what does a white horse mean? Now here's where the revelation comes. I'm just as positive as this as I'm standing here knowing this is the word. I've read every book on it I could find. And with uh, I, the last time that I was trying to go through it just teaching it about 30 years ago, I took the book. Somebody had told me that the Adventists had more light on the second coming of Christ than any people that they know. So I found some of their good books to read it. I got Smith's book on Daniel Revelation. And he said this white horse that went forth was white. And it symbolized a conqueror. And in this conquering, many of you had been his brother here, knows the book. Many of you others saw it over reading it. And um, in others, I read two or three, uh, I read, I can't call it, two more books read, and both men agreed that that was right. And this fine teacher is supposed to be some of the best with the best line. So I thought, well, if I don't know, I'll just say what they said. Try to teach it that way. They give a very good uh, uh, exclamation of it, what it really meant. And they said, now here's a white horse. And a white horse is a power, a charger. And said the man that sat on that was the, the white horse was the Holy Spirit that went forth in the early age and conquered that age for the kingdom of God. He had a bow in his hand, which meant like Cupid. He shot the arrows of love into the hearts of the people, the love of God, and he conquered. Now, that sounds very good, but it isn't the truth. No, it wasn't. White does mean righteous. We, we realize that. The white means righteous. The teachers taught it that it was the Holy Spirit conquering in the first age. But my revelation of, by the Holy Spirit is not that way. My revelation by the Holy Spirit is Christ and the Holy Spirit is the self-same person. Amen. Only in a different form. Amen. So here stands Christ, the Lamb. We know He was the Lamb. He's standing here with the book in His hand and there goes the white horse rider. Amen. Hey? So it wasn't the Holy Spirit. Uh, that's one of the mysteries of the last days. How that Christ can be the three persons in one. Amen. It's not three different people, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, being three gods, as the Trinitarians try to tell us it is. It's three, it's three manifestations of the same person. Amen. Or you might call it three offices. If you're talking to ministers, you wouldn't use office. Although Ray will happen to think I'm on tape. So I'll tell you, of course, Christ couldn't say, I'll pray in my office and he'll send you another office. We know that. But if you want to make it, it's three attributes of the same God. Amen. Not three gods, three attributes of the same God. Amen. And so, how could Christ be out there, the white horse conquering and standing here with a book in his hand? Amen. It isn't, though. It isn't Christ. Notice. Now, the Holy Spirit and the revelation and Christ is, the Holy Spirit is Christ in another form. Amen. Right. Notice, it is the Lamb that opened the books. And the Lamb is Christ. And Christ is not seen anymore. From then, but He is seen in the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter coming on a white horse. Amen. 
If you'd like to read it, let's turn to Revelation 19, uh, 11, 6. Let's read it right quick now while we're, while we're, we got enough time. I hope so it'll make it just a little better to us. 19, uh, 19, 11, begin at the 11th verse and read down, including the 16th. And I saw heaven open. Behold, a white horse, not on the earth, in heaven. Okay? And he that sat on him was called faithful, true, and righteous, does he judge and make war. His eyes were flames of fire, and on his head was many crowns. Look at the diadem. And he had a name written that no man knows but himself. I wish I could stop on that just a minute. Oh, my, I got a good notion, but maybe we're too much. Nobody knows. Did you ever know that the name of Jehovah is not correct? Anyone know? Dr. Vale, you know that's true. The translators can never translate it. It's spelled J-U-H-V. J-V-H-U, I mean. It isn't Jehovah. They couldn't touch it. They don't know what it is. It's called a Jehovah. But it wasn't his name. Look. Every time a victory is won or something goes on, a name is changed. Look at the days of Abraham. He was first Abram and never could have that baby until his name was changed to Abraham. And Sarah, S-A-R-R-A, could not have nothing but a dead womb until her name was changed to S-A-R-A-H. Jacob means supplanter. Deceiver, and that's what he did. He put sheepskin on himself and deceived his prophet father to take the birthright. He put popper sticks in the water, speckled them, scared the cattle when it was pregnant with the with her young to make speckled cattle and sheep. Nothing but a deceiver. But one night he caught a hold of something real, <laughs> and he knew it was real, and he. Stayed with it and held on until he overcome and his name was changed and called Israel, meaning a prince with power before God. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Ever overcomer. Simon was a fisherman. But when his faith caught and know that with Jesus, when he told him he was the Messiah and told him who his name was and what his father's name was, he was overcome and changed from Simon to Peter. Amen. Saul, good name. Saul was a king one time in Israel. But yeah, Saul didn't fit an apostle. Might be all right for a king, but not an apostle. So Jesus changed his name from what? From Saul to Paul. Look at the sons of thunder and on down. And Jesus, his name on earth was Redeemer Jesus. When he was on earth, he was a Redeemer. That's true. But when he conquered death and hell and overcome him and ascended on high, he received a new name. Amen. That's the reason you hire the way they do and they don't get nothing. Amen. It'll be revealed in the thunder. <laughs> Notice the mystery. He's coming, riding. There's got to be something to change this church. You know that. There's got to be something. Notice, no man knows but himself. I noticed. No man know but himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name was called the Word of God. <laughs> oh. Notice. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he tread the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There comes the Messiah. There he is. Not this fellow on this horse back here. Watch a different here. He's standing with the book in his hand here. The redemptive work is just... He hadn't took his place yet. So it was not the Christ that went forth the Holy Spirit. Not disagreeing with them, great man. No, sir, I don't do it. I wouldn't want to do that, but this is what uh, my revelation of it is. If you got something different, well, that's all right, but it ain't all right with me. See, I, I believe it this way. You know, you want. And 
Notice, Christ is not seen anymore. See? From the time there, but he is on a white horse. So if this guy is riding a white horse, he's only an impersonator of Christ. Amen. Get that? Notice, the rider on the white horse don't have any name. He might use two or three titles. <laughs> but he hasn't got any name. But Christ has a name. What is it? The Word of God. That's what it is. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. And the Word made flesh. See? The rider has no name. But Christ is called the Word of God. That's what he is. He's called that. Now, he's got a name that no man knows. But he's called the Word of God. This guy's called nothing. See? But he's on a white horse. The rider has no arrows for his bow. Did you notice? He had a bow, but there's nothing said about having any arrows. So he must be a bluffer. <laughs> right. Maybe he's got a lot of thunder and no lightning. But you find out Christ had both lightning and thunder. For out of his mouth goes a sharp two-edged sword. And he smites the nations with it. This guy can't smite nothing. Hallelujah. But he's playing the part of a hypocrite. He's going forth riding on a white horse, going out to conquer. Christ has a sharp sword. And what? It comes from his mouth. The living word. That's Word of God revealed to his servants like he said to Moses, go stand there and hold that stick out there and call for flies. And there was flies. <laughs> sure. Whatever he said, he's done it. And it come to pass, his living word, God, and his word is a self-same person. God is the word. Who is this mysterious writer of the first church age then? Who is he? Well, let's think of it. Who is this mysterious rider that starts forth in the first church age and rides come on out into eternity? Goes to the end. The second seal comes forth and goes right on out into the end. The third seal comes forth and goes right on out into the end. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Every one of them winds right up out here in the end. Now at the end time, these books have been rolled up. All this time with these mysteries in them, it's broken. Amen. Amen. Then out comes the mystery to see what it is. But actually, they started forth at the first church age because it, the church, first church age received the message like this. A white horse rider went out. See, who is he? He's mighty. And he's conquering power. He's a great fellow. And he's conquering power. You want me to tell you who he is? He's the Antichrist. Amen. Exactly what he is. Amen. Now, because, you see, if an Antichrist, Jesus said, that the two would be so close together and so it would deceive the very elected, the bride, if it was possible. Antichrist. It's the Antichrist spirit. Remember in the church ages, when we opened the first church age back there, we found out that the Holy Spirit was against a certain thing that got started in that church age. And that was called... The deeds of the Nicolaitans. You remember? Yeah. Nicol means to conquer. Laity means the church. The laity. Nicolaitans to conquer the laity. Take the Holy Spirit out of the church and give it all to one holy man. Yeah. Let him be the boss of all of it. You went to it. Nicolaitans. Notice, Nicolaitia was a, a saying in one church it become a doctrine in the next church age. And in the first church age, it was a force. And they had the Nicene of Council. And it was then made us a doctrine in a church. And what was the first thing happened? An organization from it. Now, is that right? Tell me where the first organized church come from. Roman Catholic Church. 
Tell me if Revelations don't say in the book of Revelation 17 that she was a whore and her daughters were harlots. Amen. That's the same thing it organized with her. Amen. Harlots. Amen. Taking the abomination, filthiness, of their fornications for doctrine. Teaching for doctrine the commandments of man. Notice. Look. He starts out to conquer. Notice he has no crown. A white horse rider I'm speaking of here. See? A bull and a crown was given him afterwards. See? He had no crown to start with, but a crown was given him. Notice. Later, he was given a crown. Yeah, three of them. <laughs> three on one. <laughs> that was 300 years later at the Nicaea Council when he started out a spirit of Nicolaidia to form an organization among the people. And then it kept on going on, going on, and become a saying. Then it become a doctrine. Remember Christ speaking back to the church, said, Thou hatest the deeds of these Nicolaitans, which I hate too. Amen. Trying to conquer, take the Holy Spirit, there's only one holy man, he can forgive all the sins and everything. And we just read over there, Paul spoke of it. That thing was said in the last days, and he couldn't be revealed till the last days. Then he that led us will take the Spirit of God out of there and then he'll reveal himself. Today he's under the disguise of a white horse. Yeah. Watch how he changes in that white horse in a few minutes. Yeah. He's going to only become a white horse and becomes a beast. Yeah. Many heads and horns. See? See? The white horse, he's a deceiver now. That's the reason the people have known it all this time. They thought it, but here it is now. It's going to be revealed by the Scripture. Notice. When Nicolaitia, see, Antichrist is finally, he's incarnate in a man, then he's crowned. When he starts off as a Nicolaitia spirit in the church, he's a spirit, you can't crown a spirit. But 300 years later, he become a pope. And then they crowned him. He had no crown to start with, but he got a crown later. See? When that spirit become incarnate. See? He become a man. Nicolaitan doctrine become a man. Then they could crown it. He couldn't do it because it's just a doctrine. Glory. Notice. And when this Holy Spirit that we have becomes incarnate to us, the one that's in our midst now in the form of the Holy Ghost, becomes incarnate to us in the person of Jesus Christ, we'll crown him king of Amen. Right. I remember, about the time Christ come on the throne, the Antichrist come on the throne, Judas. About the time Christ went off the earth, Judas went off the earth. Just about the time the Holy Spirit come back, the Antichrist come back. You know, John said over here, little children, not have your anger show about the Antichrist, which he's already come and working in the children of disobedience. The Antichrist then, there he was, begin to form in there the Nicolaitan spirit to make an organization. No wonder I hated that thing. There you are. It wasn't me, it's something in here. There's the thing that's come out. You see it? I was all around the sides of it. I couldn't see it till now. I, I know it now. There it is, that Nicolaitan spirit God hated. And now that spirit become incarnate and they crowned it. And here it is right here what the Bible said to do with it. Perfect. Oh, my. Incarnate, he become a man and then they crowned him. Read notice. Or read rather. How Daniel says he will take over the church kingdom. Would you like to read it? we got time to do that, haven't we? Yeah. All right. Listen, let's go back to Daniel just a moment. Turn back to the book of Daniel, and we'll read just a moment. We won't be maybe another 15, 20 minutes or 30 or something. All right. Let's do uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter, and um, let's take the 21st verse. Here's Daniel. Daniel speaking now how this fellow's going to take over. And in his state shall stand up a vile person. Rome called it. To whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. Now watch. But he 
shall come in a peaceable, come in peaceable and obtain the kingdom by flattery. Exactly what it done. What Daniel said this Antichrist would do. He will fit the people's place. Just he'll fit their, their menu for this day. For the churches. For in this church age, they don't want the word Christ but they want church. Amen. The first thing they don't ask you, if you're a Christian, what church you belong to? What church? They don't want Christ the Word. You go tell them about the Word and how to straighten up, but they don't want that. They want something that's live any way they want to and still belong to church and obtain their testimony. So he fits the menu just exactly. And remember, he was finally called she. In the Bible, and she was a prostitute and had daughters. Amen. Just fits the bill of the day, what the people want. There it is. Amen. God has promised it. When the word is refused, then they are turned to their desires. Amen. Let's read Thessalonians again. I want you to watch it. Well, we read it a while ago. Second Thessalonians 2, 9 to 11. It said that they would, turning down, rejecting the truth, they would be given over to a reprobate mind Amen. and would believe a lie Amen. and would be damned by it. Amen. Now, that's, what, that's what the Holy Spirit said. Now, isn't that the desire of the church today? You try to tell people they have to do this, that, and they let you know right quick they're a Methodist, Presbyterian, or one more. They don't have to paddle in your boat. See? Certainly, they want it. And God said, if they want it, I'll just let them have it. And I'll actually make them believe it. That's the truth, because I'll give them a reprobate mind concerning the truth. Now, look here what the Bible says also. As Jabez and Jabez withstood Moses, so will these guys in the last days with a reprobate mind concerning the truth, and shall turn the grace of our God into the sinners, denying the Lord God. Now, you see where it's at. Not only Catholic, but Protestant. Yeah. The whole thing. So all the whole organized world. Yes, That's a white horse rider. Under the, the way of, of a, a, a white righteousness church. See? Yeah. But an antichrist. Amen. It's got to look like on a horse even. It's like Christ is coming on a horse. Yeah. All anti. So it's close to deceive the very elect. Here he is. He's the antichrist. He started riding in the first church age. Now he rides on down, on down through every age. I watch him. You see, way back in the way back apostles' time, he was called Nicolaitia there. Then the next church age, then he become a doctoring in the church. First he was just a saying. Then he become a doctor. Swell, celebrity people, fine dressed, highly educated, polished. Didn't want all that carrying on in the church. No, they didn't want all that Holy Ghost stuff. Must be a church, and we all go through the Nicaea Council and so forth at Rome. Then when they come there, they tuck the church and tuck paganism, Roman Catholicism, or paganism, pagan Rome, and a few superstitions, and tuck the, the uh, Estrus, the Queen of Heaven, and turn it to be Mary, the mother, make intercessors out of dead people, and so forth, and tuck that round culture wafer, which is still puts round on there, and call it the body of Christ because it represents the mother of heaven. And the Catholic passing by crosses and stuff because that light's burning in there is supposed to be the kosher which is turned to God by the power of the priest when it's nothing in the world but just plain paganism. Yeah. I just don't understand. Well, yes, I do. Yes, I understand by the grace of God. Sure. Now, notice. Oh, my. How they can do that. See? And they're given their desire. No, that's true. You don't have to do that. No, sir. If you don't want to do it, you're not forced to do it. If you don't want to tally up to God's way of living and things and worship, you don't have to do it. God don't make nobody do it. But let me tell you something. If your name was placed on that land's book of life before the foundation the world, you'd be so happy to do it, you can't wait for the minute. Amen. Look here. When you say, I'll give you to understand I'm just as religious. Well, that might be true. Look at who could say that priest wasn't religious in the days of the Lord Jesus? Who could say Israel wasn't religious in the wilderness when there was evil? God's blessed me so many times. Yes, He did them too. 
said he didn't have to work for the living. He fed them out of heaven. Amen. And Jesus said there are everyone lost and gone and perished. Amen. Our fathers have said eat man in the wilderness for 40 years. Jesus said, and there are everyone dead, eternally Amen. separated. Amen. He said, but I'm the bread of life that come from God out of heaven. Amen. Man eats this bread, he'll never die. Amen. <laughs> the tree of life. Amen. Notice. This is how and when Jesus comes, those priests, they come up there very religious. Boy, nobody could say there was a nice man. Ah, they walked to the line of that law. Everything that church said, they did it. If they didn't, they were stoned. And so he walked out. You know what Jesus called him? John called him, you bunch of snakes in the grass. Amen. Don't you think because you belong to that organization, you got anything to do with God? Amen. And Jesus said, you are of your father, the devil. Amen. That every time that God sent a prophet, what happened? You stoned him and throwed him in the grave, and now you go out there and polish his grave. Isn't that the same thing that Catholic Church has done? Yeah. Look at Joan of Arc and St. Uh, Patrick and all the rest of them. They're the one who puts them in and uh, dug Joan of Arc's body up and throw it in the river a couple hundred years later and burn her for a witch. Yeah. Your father's a devil in his works you do. Amen. Exactly. Go all over the world. Amen. <clears throat> right? That's what Jesus said. Amen. And you think it's all right. It looks pretty good. That white horse. But look what you got. Yeah. It's exactly what's riding. Amen. Now, but he said they wanted it so he would give them a strong delusion. Remember, this prostitute of Revelation 17, she is a mystery, mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots. And John admired her just like this man. Look, wait, we can hear him watching, watching this horse here. <coughs> See, but you notice it was what happened was this that he admired her with great admiration, but the mystery was that she drank the blood of the martyrs of Christ. Yeah. A beautiful church set there decked in purple and gold. She had a cup in her hand as filthy as of her fornications. What is fornications? Is unrighteous living. That's her doctrine she was given out taking the Word of God and making a non effect but some Hail Marys and all this other kind of stuff and giving it out and the kings of the earth committed fornications with her. Amen. Well, you say that's Catholic Church but she was a mother of harlots. Amen. The same thing as she was. There you are. What happened? When the reformer died and his message died out you, re, you organized it and put a bunch of rickies in there and started the thing right back to live the way you wanted to. You didn't want to stay with the Word. Amen. Amen. Instead of moving right on with the word, they stay right there, and this is it. <laughs> you don't do that. He, that's it. <laughs> Him up there. Notice. That's one thing we ought to hit this couple more places before closing. He is the prince that was destroy Daniel's people. Do you believe that? I'm going to make this if you just help be lenient with me for a few minutes. I'll, I'll make it just as quick as I can, but I want to make it positive. Amen. All right. The Holy Spirit, give me that as certain as I'm standing here. Amen. Now look, let's take, go back to Daniel again just a minute. I want to read something for you. Well, if you don't go back, it's all right. I want to read Daniel 9. Daniel 9, and I want to read the 26th and 27th verse of Daniel 9. And watch if he is the one to destroy Daniel's people. What he's going to do? Next three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. See? That's the three score two weeks to be cut off out of the 70 weeks. Not for himself, but for the people and the prince. That's the hierarchy here. That shall come, that shall come, shall destroy the city and sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with great flood, and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. I want to ask you people something. After Christ was cut off from the earth in the three and a half years of his ministry, and um, what destroyed the temple? Who destroyed it? Rome. Sure. Constantine. Or not, I beg your pardon. Uh, Titus. The Roman general. He destroyed the prince. I noticed. Watch this fellow come right on down this floor. When Jesus was born, the red dragon in heaven stood at the woman to devour her child as soon as it was born. Is that right? Amen. Who was it tried to devour the child when it was born? Oh. There's a red dragon. Amen. Here's your prince. Here's your beast. Amen. There they are. Every one of them just the same. 
devoured the child. God caught it up into heaven and sat on his throne. That's where Christ is now. Till the time appointed. See? Now, watch what he shall do. Now, oh, uh, I believe I was talking to somebody here. It might have been Brother Roberson today or somebody I was talking on about this. About not this year, but just on the same thing. I believe I preached on it here not long about what will happen in this United States on this money situation. See? Amen. Well, we're now paying our debts on taxes that will be paid 40 years from today. That's how far we are behind. Do you ever turn on CARE up there or Lifeline and listen to it? See? From the Washington? Wow, we are completely busted. That's all. What's the matter? The gold's all housed up and the Jews holds a bomb. <laughs> it's going to be Rome. Now watch. We know who owns the big apartment stores, but Rome has the greatest part of the wealth of the world. The rest of it, the Jews. Now watch this. I just listened to this, how the Holy Spirit brought that down for me. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now watch. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the obligations to cease for the overspreading of the abomination. He shall make it desolate even unto the consummation. And that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Watch. Oh, what a shrewd thing he is. Here he is. Now we got our picture and know that he's wrong. We know that he's a white horse rider. We know that he went forth as a doctrine. And then what was pagan Rome converted into papal Rome and crowned? Now watch. In the end time, not in the early days when Christ is preaching, but in the end time, the last part of the week where we just took the 70 weeks of Daniel. And Christ has prophesied for the three and a half years and three and a half years are yet determined. Is that right? And this prince in that time is to make a covenant with Daniel's people, which is the Jews. Amen. That's when the bride's taken out. She won't see it. Notice. In the last one half of Daniel's week, the people makes a covenant. This prince makes a covenant with Rome, makes a covenant with them. No doubt for the wealth for Catholic and Jew holds the wealth of the world. I was in the Vatican. I've seen the Triple Crown. was supposed to have an interview with the Pope. Baron von Lundberg got it for me on, for a, a Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And when they took me to King, they took the cuffs out of my trousers. That's all right. Told me never turn my back walk away from that. That's all right. But I said, what do I have to do before this guy? He said, well, you just go in and kneel down on one knee and kiss his finger. I said, that's out. Amen. That's out. No, I said, I'll, I'll call any man a brother. If wants to be a brother, I'll call him reverend if he wants to have the title of that, but to worship a man that all belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. No, it's no man's name right now. No, indeed. So I didn't do it, but I got to go all through the Vatican. Why, you couldn't buy it with a hundred billion, billion dollars. Well, you know, and just think, the wealth of the world, the Bible says, was found in it. All, just think of the great places, the billions, times. Why did communism raise up over here in Russia? It just makes me sick at my stomach to hear so many preachers holler about communism. Yeah. And they don't even know what they're crowing about. Amen. Right. Communism ain't nothing. Amen. It's a tool in the hand of God to bring revenge upon the earth for the blood of the saints. Amen. That's right. Amen. And as the church is taken away, Rome and and the Jews will make a covenant with one another. The Bible said they would Amen. with the holy people. And now notice they'll make it because why? This nation is going to be busted. Amen. And the rest of the world that's on the gold standard is busted. You know that. If we're living off of taxes, due bills, for 40 years from now, where are we at? There's only one thing can happen. That's to call in the currency and pay off the bonds, and we can't do it. Amen. Wall Street owns them, and Wall Street's controlled by the Jews. Amen. The rest of it's in the Vatican, and the Jews has got the rest of it in Wall Street with the commerce of the world. Right. We can't call it in. And if they could do it, you think these whiskey 
gods and, and all these tobacco people with billions times billions of dollars a year and write off all their income tax for old vulgar pictures and things like that. Go out in Arizona there and buy millions of acres of land of thousands and dig down big wells at fifty thousand dollars and pay it off with income tax. And they'll put you in jail if you don't pay yours. But they write it off and throw up wells and send bulldozers in. And what do they do? They put housing projects in there and the next term around with their money they made, they got to make an investment and put houses, projects in there and sell them for millions of dollars. You think them guys is going to compromise to change the currency? Like this fellow down here and uh, what's his name? Castro did? He done the only smart thing he ever did do then. <laughs> destroyed the bomb. Made him off and destroyed. Notice. But we can't do that. These guys won't let it. The rich merchants of the earth hold it. Amen. And there's only one thing to do. The Catholic Church can pay it off. She's the only one's got the money. She can do it. And she will do it. And in doing this to get it, she'll compromise with the Jews and make a covenant. And when she makes this covenant with the Jews, I remember, I'm taking this from the Scripture. I now, when she does this and makes this covenant, we notice in Daniel 8, 23 and 25, he will cause craft to prosper and craft is manufacturing in his hand. And he makes this covenant with the Jews and in the midst of this three and a half years he breaks his covenant as soon as he gets the thing wrapped up and gets the money of the Jews tied up. And when he does that, oh my, oh my, he's called the Antichrist until the end of the church age for he is the he and his children are against Christ and the Word. Amen. This man's called the Antichrist. Now he's going to hold the money, and that's where I think he'll come in. Just a minute, I say this, and then we'll go back to it in a minute. He's called the Antichrist, and will be called the Antichrist in the sight of God until the end time. Now. But then you'll be called something else. Now, when he gets the money all under control, then he'll break this covenant with the Jews as Daniel here said he would do it. In the midst of the last half of the 70 weeks of Daniel. And then, brother, what will he do? He'll have all of the world trade and the commerce a pact with the world. Because he'll hold the wealth of the world completely. And during that time, the two prophets will rise on the scene and call that 144,000. Then what will take place? Then the mark of the beast of Revelation 13 will set in because he holds all the commerce, trade, and everything in the world. And what will take place then? The mark of the beast will come in that no man can buy or sell except him that has the mark of the beast. Thank God the church will be enjoying a great three and a half years more. You don't have to go through that. Now notice, at the end time, at the end of the church ages now, he is called, he and his children are called the Antichrist because anything that's against Christ is Antichrist. And anything that's against the Word is against Christ because Christ is the Word. Now he's Antichrist. Then in Revelations 12, 7 and 9, when Satan is cast out the accuser, you'll put that down because I want you to read it. We haven't got time now. It's called 20, uh, 15 or 10. But in the Revelations 12, 7 and 9, Satan, the spirit, the devil, which is up there now, <laughs> accuser of our brethren, all right? The church is taken up and Satan is cast out. When the church goes up, Satan comes down. Amen. Then Satan incarnates himself in the Antichrist and is called the beast. Uh -huh. Then Revelation 13, he sets the mark down. Amen. See, when 
he that led us only now, Christianity is left on the earth in its purity, is because him that led us. You remember back here in Thessalonians? Setting up on the temple of God, calling himself God, forgiving sins on earth, and that will go on and iniquity shall abound and on, because it won't be known yet until his time to be revealed is called. And then the church will be caught away, and when he's caught away, then he changes himself from an antichrist. Now, oh my, the church, the great church, now he becomes the beast. Mm-hmm. I wish I could make people see that. I remember the Antichrist and the beast is the same self-spirit. There's a trinity. Yes, sir. It's three stages of the same devil power. Remember, Nicolaidia. See? It had to be incarnate before it could be crowned. See? Now watch this. Three stages. First stage is called Antichrist. Second stage is called the false prophet. Third stage is called the beast. Notice, Nicolaidia, the Antichrist, teaching has started in the days of Paul against God's Word. Antichrist. Then, he's called again the false prophet, which when the teaching become a man, he was a prophet to the teaching of the hierarchy of the the hierarchy of the Catholic Church. The Pope was the prophet to the false word, and that made him a false prophet. The third stage is a beast, a man that's crowned in the last days with every power that pagan Rome ever had because the seven-headed beast dragon was cast out of heaven and come incarnate in the false prophet. Amen. There he is. He had seven crowns. And he was cast out and thrown into the earth and received. All right. What are we saying? Who is this rider? This horse rider. You know what it is? It's Satan Superman. Amen. I went the other night. Two brothers sitting in this church now. Brother Norman back there, and I believe and Brother Fred, was over to hear a man teach on the Antichrist. A well-known man, one of the best assemblies of God he's got. And his interpretation of Antichrist was that they're going to take a, a vitamin of some sort out of a, of a man and transfer this life out of a man into a great image that's going to stick a step a city block at a time. And that's going to, Could you imagine a man filled with the Holy Ghost under such illusion as that or claim to be. When here's the Bible says who the Antichrist is. It's not a it's a man. Notice this rider is nothing but Satan Superman, an incarnate devil. He's an educated genius. Now I hope you got your ears open. <laughs> Is trying one of his children out not long ago on a television cast to see if he wasn't smarter than the next man to run for president. But, however, he's got a lot of wisdom. So Satan. He tries to sell it. He sold it to Eve. He sold it to us. We've been wanting a Superman. We got it. All right. The whole world's wanting a Superman. They're going to get it. Just wait till the church goes up and Satan's cast out. He'll incarnate. That's right. They want somebody who can really do the job. He'll do it. Educated. This is a Satan Superman with education, with wisdom, with church theology of his own word, of his own making. And he rides his white denominational horse to deceive the people. And he will conquer every religion of the world. Because they've all gone into the confederation of, of the of churches and the World Confederation of Churches, and they already got their buildings built and everything set in right in line. Yeah. There ain't one thing left ever denomination stuck right into it, the Federation of Churches. And what's back of it? Rome and the popes now crying, we're all one, let's come together and walk together. And these people, even some of you full gospel people, deny, have to deny your evangelical teaching to take such a step as that. Yeah. What have you done so blind to that denominational thing? You've rejected truth, and truth is set before them, and they they walked away from it and left it. And now they've 
been given over to a strong delusion to believe a lie and be damned with it. That's exactly what it is. And the Antichrist takes it all. And the Bible said that he deceived all. A double L. All upon the face of the earth whose names were not written under those seals from the Now, the Bible said he did it, he did it. <laughs> they say, well, I brought... There you are. Yeah, that's just exactly. It's the same prostitute uh, institution. It's the same system that started in the beginning, which is Antichrist throughout. I'll hear from it, but that's, it's the truth I expect. <laughs> hey, now, notice, he'll conquer and almost has in his grip right now while he's still antichrist before he can become beast, you talk about cruel punishment. You just wait. Watch what them that slept your own earth will have to go through with. There will be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. For the dragon, Rome, spurted water out of his mouth to make war with the remnant of the woman's seed that was left upon the earth. After the bride had been selected, it took out. And the dragon made war with the remnant. His war to come in was hunted down. And the real church would go through that if it was possible. But you see, they are done under this blood by the grace of Christ. And they're not going to be in the tribulation period. Next thing for the church is rapture. Hey, man, amen. amen. Let me tell you, we're telling what a conqueror he's going to do, and he's really going to conquer. He's already done it. Amen. It's just already sewed up, that's done. Go short for the money, filthy lucre. <laughs> exactly. They love money more than God. Everything to think about now is how much money has he got? What is it? You know, it's been said lots of times give the church the money, and she'll revolutionize the world. Give the church the money. And she'll send advances all over the world. And what will she do? She will conquer the world for Christ. Let me tell you something, my poor blind friend. Amen. The world's not won by money, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Give God man whose gallant man will stand there on that word, live or die. That'll conquer. There'll only be one thing you can conquer. Those that's got their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life from the foundation of the world. That's the only thing you'll hear. Money won't have nothing to do with it. Send them farther into their denominational tradition. Let's see. Yes, with educational genius he'll be. He'll be smart. My, my, my. All of his children around him will be smart. PhD, LLD, double LD, QSD, A, B, C, D, F, on down to Z. They'll have it all. Smart. Wow! It's after the order of Satan. Any shrewd craftness against the Bible is of Satan. That's exactly what he took Eve with. Eve said, oh, it's written, God said, first not do that. He said, but wait, surely God won't do it, but I'll open your eyes and give you some wisdom. She got it. We've been wanting him. We got it too, this nation. Notice, he'll conquer the whole religious world. He'll conquer, make a covenant with Daniel's people. Here it is both in the Gentile and in the Daniel's people, the Jews for the last week. And here we are even drawn out on boards and you see it perfectly. There's where it is. Thank God. There he is. That organizational system is of the devil. Amen. That's no punches pulled on it either. Exactly. It's the root of the devil. It's a... And I'm not people, not people in there. Them are God's people, many of them. But you know what? When we get over here, do we get these trumpets sounding in the next time I come by? These trumpets sounding. Remember when them last angels, that third angel come across? Come out of her, my people! Yeah. And that angel fires at the same yeah. time that message drops here for the last trumpet, last oh. angel's message, last seal open. All happens at the same time. Yes, it all seals up and goes over into eternity. Now what? At the same time that this guy's a conquered, now I'll close. God's going to do something then too. Let's not just give Satan all the credit here. Let's not talk about him altogether. See, while this...
great thing is going out there, this great system winding in these organizations in a union so they can pool themselves together and stand against communism and not knowing that God raised up communism to conquer them. Sure. What, what, what made communism rise in Russia? Because of the impurity of the Roman church and the rest of it. Amen. They took all the money there was in Russia and starved the people to death and give them nothing in the city and lived just like the rest of the world. Amen. I was down in Mexico not long ago and see them poor little children. Any Catholic country is not even self-supporting. It's not a one of them. Ask me where, show me where they're at. Amen. Any Catholic controlled country can't even support its own self. France, Italy, and all them, Mexico, wherever you go, they're not self-supporting. Why? The church took everything they had. That's the reason Russia kicked it out. Watch what's taking place. I know this myself. I stand down there and you think the golden jubilee was on. You hear the bells ringing. And you hear a poor little woman coming down the street dragging her feet and a father packing a baby and two or three of them crying. She was doing penance to some dead woman up there that her thought she could go to heaven by. Oh, what a pitiful thing. Then I see stand down there. Here come their economics are so poorly balanced. The church takes everything to God. Here little Poncho, uh, uh, maybe uh, maybe uh, Poncho uh, Frank, he comes down and he's a brick mason and he, ma- he makes uh, 20 pesos a week. But it'll take the whole 20 pesos buying a pair of shoes. That's their economics. But now here, what about then if, if, if he being a mason and a bricklayer and make 20 pesos a week to send, I don't know what he makes, but say that kind of economics or way it's balanced up. Notice, now if he makes 20 pesos a week, here comes Chico, see, which means little one. And he works out there for about five pesos a week. And he's got 10 kids to feed. But there'll be somebody knocking on his door. To take about five of those pesos or four of them anyhow to pay for some grease candle to burn on a million dollar gold order for his sins. Amen. There you are. That's the balance of the economics. That's the way the countries are. The thing takes it all. The church takes it all. She's just got it in her hands, that's all. It's her with the money of the Jews and that covenant the Bible said they'll take the whole thing. And then he becomes a beast. He breaks his covenant. He ravishes. He tears out the rest of that woman's seed like that and spurts water out of his mouth. Makes war and he'll be weeping and wailing and ashes. He's in the bride getting married in glory. Same time. Don't miss it, friends. God help me. I want to be there. I don't care what it costs. I want to be there. I notice. And the same time this is going on, just before this takes place, rather, on the earth, God has promised, while all them scruples of denominations arguing their difference about their creed, God promised that He would send us a true prophet of the true word with a message to return to the original word of God and the faith of the fathers to bring down the power of the Holy Ghost amongst the people with a power that will raise her above these things and take her in. Same word be vindicated of Jesus Christ that He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lo, I am with you always, even to the consummation. And the works that I do shall you do also. I'll be right with you a little while and they won't see me no more because they'll organize themselves and scatter out. But ye'll see me, for I will be with you. I'll even be in you unto the consummation. When he said his indignation be poured out at the consummation. There you are. Oh, God. Who is that white horse rider? You're not blind. You see who it is. It's that antichrist and that deceitful spirit that's gone now and crept in. Made an inch. See, God just keeps repeating it. He shows that as a man going forth with a white horse and with his bow and no arrow. He's a bluff. He has no power. Amen. Say the power of the church. Where is it at? What do they do? They say, we're the original church. The original church cast out devils, healed the sick and raised the dead, saw visions and everything else. Where is it now? The bluff, bow with no arrow. <laughs> That's 
trying. But you see, when Christ come, a sword went forth from his mouth like a lightning flash. It went forth and consumed his enemies. It cast away the devil. It cut away everything else. And it come, his vesture dipped in blood, and on his thigh was written the word of God. Amen. Amen. Here he comes with his army coming from heaven. That white horse rider has been in the land all the time. He will change from Antichrist. He does that and becomes to a false prophet. See, he first started the Antichrist, the spirit. Then he become a false prophet. Then later, when the devil is cast out, he's incarnate then with the devil. Three stages. The first, he's a devil to begin with, a spirit of the devil. Then he becomes a false prophet, teacher of a false doctrine. Next thing he comes is the very devil himself, incarnate. See? There he is. And at the same time that this devil falls out of heaven and becomes incarnate in a man, the Holy Spirit goes up and comes down incarnate man. <laughs> oh, my. What a time. Tomorrow night, God willing, the second seal. You love him? Yeah. How? You believe it? Yeah. I just shut the table. <laughs> I'm going to hear from that. You know that. But I expect him. Let me tell you something, brother. I just now know for one time in my life I, that the Spirit has always warned me against them, that organization. I'm grateful to the Lord God for showing me these things. Amen. I know that it's the truth. Yeah. There it is revealed right there. Here he rides right down through the age and comes out right here and displays himself. Right down here is the perfect as he can be. See? That's him. Now, we're not deceived on that. Now, you've got your eyes open. Stay away from that kind of stuff. Yeah. Love the Lord with all your heart and stay right with him. Yes, sir. Come out of Babylon. Three things. Proved by the Word. Shown by a picture. Manifested by the works of the Spirit. Vindicating that it is the Word. Let the Word come up on these handkerchiefs, Lord. Heal the sick. Heal every sick person that's present. And those out there that writes in and calls in. Father, at this hour, there's another healing that should be done right now. And we can go on to healing church. But Lord, is that soul. We want that just in an order, Lord. And these things must come. We pray, God, that you'll take these words now that has been said and make them real to the people. Let them see it, Lord. Being pinched for time, and, uh, you know, Father. So I pray that enough has been said that the Holy Spirit will take it and reveal it in the heart. Those who are writing the scriptures down, may they study them. Those who are making tapes or, re or, or hearing your tapes, may they study it. Not put their own interpretation to it now, but just study the Word. Granted, Father, in Jesus' name I commit it all to you and for your glory. Amen. Somebody here that don't know him is pardoning. Do it now. You hear that straight, strong rebuke? If you ever expect to draw an eye, do it now for days after this. What if that was the breaking of that seal? What if that was the angel that sent forth there that blasted almost me off of the ground the other day, sent him back there? 
when three witnesses are standing close that I told you before went there be an explosion that would almost send me up and I was caught up by seven angels and come eastward. The same like to shut me from the ground. Is that right, Brother Norman? Brother Fred Softman, who was standing with me when it happened above Tucson, and the, the setting, picking the birds off of my clothes, exactly what the vision said, and it was south of towards Tucson. If that's right, raise up your hand, Brother Fred. Brother Norman, there they are. Stand up on your feet so that people can see that you were there. Witness. I've never heard anything like it in my life. Praise God. And immediately they didn't hunt the rest of the day. I begged Fred the next morning, he don't know this, I begged him to go out hunting, kept saying, do it, do it, but he said, he told me back there, he won't do it, you're going east right now, and then seven angels. The first flash she opened. What if it is? We're at the last hour. Ah. Let's worship him. Forget it, friend. Don't forget it. Take it home with you. Stay with it. Hold it on your pillar. Don't forget it. Stay with it. God bless you, Mom. Other than that, we're your pastor.